Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today is the second Saturday of the month, which means it's time for the Arthritis Recovery Hour with Clint Patterson. Please welcome him back to the show. Hey, Clint, how you doing? I'm doing great, Chef AJ. Thanks for having me back. Super excited about our session today. Oh yeah, I love this topic. And you know, we get so many questions from people with all types of arthritis about exercise. Like, is it really that important? They can't exercise, they have pain. So how important is it for people that have these different types of arthritis to engage in regular exercise? Well, I'm glad you asked that question, Jeff AJ, because I just happened to have a whole presentation about that today uh, because we did get some uh, lovely comments under the last session that we did together uh, asking more about specific exercises for specific joints. So why don't we get straight into that and let me share with you my screen here and we will then be able to uh, get started on what will be a presentation on exercise um that will specifically target uh, joints that are affected with osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis for maximum pain relief. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, before we do, a, a really something really cool is a, sort of like a public announcement to people, because obviously this is the arthritis hour uh, for people with arthritis. Go check out the Plants for Joints randomized controlled trial results, uh, an interview that I did with uh, the lead researcher here, Wendy. Uh, we spoke before she did this trial. Uh, we sort of had a sort of consultation, if you like. She had picked my brains on this about five years ago. And then five years later, here we are. She's released the results. Go check out the interview I did with her just the other week. And the results for rheumatoid arthritis patients who followed a plant-based diet with exercise and stress reduction had tremendous outcomes, normally the sort of outcomes only seen uh, by people following rheumatoid arthritis medications. So it was an awesome uh, result. And she talks all about it in a very interesting, upbeat and uh, uh, fun interview. Uh, so go check out that on the Rheumatoid Solutions YouTube channel. Now, on to this uh, topic today. Uh, this is my favorite topic, by the way. With everything to do with arthritis, exercise is my favorite. It's the most uh, most passionate thing that I talk about because uh, it just it, it literally is life changing. And we'll get into all that in just a moment. In terms of the context of how this fits in the series that we've done together, Chef AJ. Uh, we've done a couple of presentations around the gut solution, namely diet and managing drugs carefully not to uh, be taking counterproductive, counterproductive uh, drugs for gut. Uh, and we talked about um, optimizing our cell health. Uh, and today we are going to therefore get into the body solution and talk about uh, exercise and everything that comes with it. So what to expect in this presentation, uh, I'll share with you my personal story, uh, which is pretty phenomenal around my exercise uh, transformation and why exercise is the golden ticket. Uh, the studies on rheumatoid and osteo as to why this is where you should be focusing so much of your attention and 16 ways exercise will answer your pain reduction prayers. And we'll look at each joint. We'll look at hands. We will look at elbows, knees, hips, and go through the exercises that are specifically recommended by the scientific literature to provide maximum pain relief for osteo and rheumatoid. And what if you're afraid of exercise? What if you can't exercise? We'll talk about that. And I'll show you lots of inspirational case studies, case studies of others along the way to demonstrate these points. So it's not just boring science and science and science and pictures, but you'll see others doing things that they couldn't do before. And I hope that uplifts you to feel motivated to exercise more. Okay, so first of all, me and my misery. Uh, in 2009, after being diagnosed just for three years, I ended up in a surgical operation, having a complete synovectomy on my left elbow. And that elbow had been locked up and uh, it, the range of motion had become very shallow. And the, the, the uh, guidelines I was getting from the medical professionals was, if it hurts, then don't move it. Well, by not moving it, it ended up uh, having this surgery. Uh, having a surgery three years after diagnosis of rheumatoid is like a disastrous outcome. Uh, and even though this was 2009, I mean, that's not that long ago, right? So the same, well, many of the similar drugs exist. 
uh, today is what they did then. It's not like a complete revolution. It's just that I stopped moving that elbow when it got inflamed. And it was so painful and so awful uh, that even on a, on a trip with my uh, now wife to Peru, you know, it was freezing and we're hiking the Inca Trail and all this sort of business. And I couldn't even cuddle her because my elbow was so bad. And at night we're freezing, we couldn't cuddle each other because my elbow prevented that. It was just like uh, disastrous levels. So after I had surgery, I promised myself whatever I did Whatever I my whatever my plan was for the left elbow, I'm going to have the opposite plan for the right elbow. And the surgeon said to me, "I'll see you again for the right elbow to have the other one done because it was showing the same signs as the left." And I made it my mission. I said, "How can I never see that guy again?" And so I thought, "Well, if not moving it like was ended up like this, then I'm going to move this right elbow like crazy." And that's what I did. I was obsessed. I was like, "You you couldn't see me not moving my." arms at any time, always moving my elbows, going to the gym, going to yoga, constantly moving them around at home, almost like I'm running on the spot. I just didn't want to stop moving my elbows. And this worked. And so this this is a uh, video from just uh, a few weeks ago when I visited my parents on the farm who don't have a pull-up bar. And so my dad grits this tractor out and he's got some, uh, uh, some spikes there on the front of the tractor uh, to, um, to pick up hay bales. And so I just used that and my mum filled that. And so that's, you know, that's what I'm able to do now on that, on the, both the, uh, uh, the, uh, the surgical elbow, but also the one that uh, was meant to end up in surgery. And now it uh, has avoided surgery and we're 14 years later and I have forgotten the name of the surgeon. So that's what we want. We want to be able to eliminate inflammation, discomfort, swelling, heat, uh, that bone on bone grinding that you get the tendonitis, all these things, we want to be able to use exercise to help us achieve that outcome. Okay. So most people don't exercise enough and the default is, is to do too little. Uh, and especially for rheumatoid arthritis, a lot of the science here is going to be around rheumatoid, but um, everything applies here with OA as well. So I didn't duplicate the sentiment of what i'm saying here with studies but the sentiment's the same so people are concerned that it's going to be painful during exercise or that it may further damage joints that are already compromised they're worried because they uh, uh maybe have too much fatigue and they just don't have the energy or they just have inertia where they say i just it's not in my my routine right now it's nice to have but you know i'm eating a bit better and i'm gonna think of like stick with that but exercise will not hurt you based on all the available evidence and some references here in the gray shaded area below exercise won't hurt you. Even if you've got big fat, swollen, heated, awful range of motion, restricted joints with rheumatoid arthritis, exercise won't hurt you. Exercise won't exacerbate the, 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 uh, the symptoms as long as you exercise sensibly and carefully. And I'll show you how to do that in this presentation. And so this is what these two slides are here, just study upon study, showing that exercise does not exacerbate disease activity in rheumatoid arthritis. And in fact, by contrast, these studies show that it decreases disease activity markers, decreases inflammation, increases physical strength, decreases pain, decreases fatigue, right? So the the, the sort of the counterintuitive thing here is when you're fatigued and you have this at, like uh, uh, disinterest in exercise, it's actually the exercise done habitual, ha habitually that will resolve that for you. And even running, as you see the last bullet point here, does not worsen osteoarthritic knees. This was a study done on people who are over the age of 50 who recreationally ran, and it turns out it did not exacerbate their disease activity. They still, they did not see increased level of cartilage degradation to those who uh, were running without osteoarthritis. And so we have to really, really embrace this message. Exercise is not the enemy. Exercise will save your life. And exercise deficiency is rife and will ruin your life. Okay. So as emphatic as I can be on this point. So here are 16 glorious ways in which exercise will change your life if you have arthritis. So first of all, 
And there, are, as I said, there's 16 slides here, and I'll, so I'll move through them at a, at a, a relatively uh, efficient pace here. But repetitions equal relief. So just every time a joint moves, it has a very, very tiny amount of anti-inflammatory effect. So the synovial fluid is released into the joint capsule when a joint moves through its range of motion. And the synovial fluid stimulates molecules that become anti-inflammatory and nurturing for the cartilage. And so we just want to uh, move a joint a lot if it has been compromised because simply stimulating synovial fluid into the joint and having that synovial fluid uh, moved around by the opposing surfaces creates a slight anti-inflammatory effect. So we want to keep moving and moving and moving joints. Okay. Number two, we want to increase muscle mass. Now, some of these pictures uh, are not like stock images, as you can see. And the reason is I've included people who are part of our community. And so I'm going to show you videos, images like this one of people, these real life examples of people who are part of the rheumatoid solutions community, who are following our dietary Patterson program and doing the exercise routines that are part of our membership and doing incredibly well. So here is Anaya. She's based in New Zealand on the left. Uh, when she got started with our program, doing a, a, a self version of an ice bath under a really cold winter um, New Zealand uh, uh, hose there and on the right after she's engaged in um, you know physical exercise in this case swimming and she can now do pull-ups and just doing uh, weight training at home and you can see the muscle mass increase that's her on the right and just getting into the pool recent uh, sorry into the uh, the lake recently uh, just that muscle mass increase and so what happens is according to the science and I'll just look down occasionally at my notes here um, is that the production of TNF alpha, which is the uh, one of the targets for inflammatory arthritis medications uh, like Anbrel and Humira, they target TNF alpha. Well, these cytokines, inflammatory cytokines, they cannibalize the muscle tissue. So when you've got inflammation, you're then having a challenge to maintain your muscle mass. But when we exercise, we're able to counteract that. And the stimulus to the muscle generates the trigger for the body to build more muscle mass. Okay. And so what's really interesting is that even when people are on medications for rheumatoid arthritis, and a study showed that even when they're in uh, technical clinical remission, the reduced muscle mass in RA patients appears to be persistent, even when the patient is in remission. So this is an interesting phenomenon where even if we take the take the medications, which of course is encouraged if you're not able to keep your CRP and ESR under control, then um, you can still have this muscle atrophy. So we must exercise regardless of drug intervention. Okay, so what about improved grip strength? So grip strength equates to longevity. So the better your grip strength, you're statistically more likely to have a longer life. And it appears that grip strength is just a, like an, an excellent window into the overall functional capacity of the body. So it's almost as though like your grip strength represents your overall ability. And so this is Danny, another one of our members here. Uh, here he is uh, getting back to what he loves to do. We're obviously requiring great finger strength and dexterity and grip strength to be able to uh, climb a wall like that. And so because people with rheumatoid arthritis have lower grip strength than, than non-RA patients, we have to make sure uh, that we really engage in physical activity that can improve our grip strength because it literally correlates with or is associated with longevity, which brings us to the next slide directly increasing your lifespan so this is a crazy statement but active individuals have a 72 percent lower risk of all cause premature death compared to individuals who are inactive okay so it's a dramatic uh dramatic uh, difference between active and inactive individuals and even extended periods of sitting for example is a risk factor for mortality so a study was done a large population study found that adults who sat for more than 11 hours a day 
So if you sit for more than 11 hours a day, had a 40% increased risk of dying within three years from any cause compared to those who sat for less than four hours a day. I mean, this is like a massive, massive uh, uh, number difference. And I like this quote. So I'll read out this one, uh, this one quote. So being unfit is a greater risk factor for death than smoking. So in 2018, a large population study was published by researcher Dr. Wal Jaber and, and colleagues. He's a cardiologist from the Cleveland Clinic. And this is what he said. Being unfit on a treadmill has a worse prognosis as far as death than being hypertensive or high blood pressure, being diabetic or being a current smoker. We've never seen something as pronounced as this and as objective as this. There actually is no ceiling for the benefit of exercise. There's no age limit that doesn't benefit from being physically fit. And being physically fit should be treated as a disease that has a prescription called exercise. Okay, so I like reading that one out. Okay, now on to the next. Now, improved range of motion. Now, we're not all going to be able to do this, and I can't do this, but check out what Rihanna is able to do. She has rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, so we don't need to set limits on what we dream of being able to do with inflammatory arthritis or osteoarthritis. And obviously she's younger and has been doing gymnastics uh, since she was a teenager. However, this is someone living with rheumatoid arthritis who's followed our program, doing the exercise component, obviously, uh, in an embraced fashion. And that's someone else uh, with our condition in our community. Okay, so a study on rheumatoid patients with active disease found that joint mobility increased as a result of a short-term, just 24-week exercise intensive program. So we can improve our range of motion. So there was one time when I couldn't take my hat off my head because my elbow didn't move that far. My fingers and wrists, everything didn't work. And you can see how this can be reversed with the right treatment, even for the worst cases of rheumatoid arthritis. So what we want to do for, for improved range of motion is to work on our strength and inflammation reduction because range of motion follows along. We don't target range of motion directly by trying to force a joint force a fist closed or force an elbow or force a knee. We work on strength and inflammation reduction and the range of motion will follow. Uh, tendonitis can be reduced. And so here is Sherry uh, coming down the stairs. She put this video up on TikTok. Now that looks like a nothing video. Like why are we watching someone walk down the stairs? Well, when you've had severe knee problems, you'll watch that video and say, I wish I could do that. That kind of like... It's almost like prancing down the stairs is like a dream come true. So tendonitis can affect our joints just like synovitis. And it throws way right up the inflammatory markers like ESO and CRP as well. So tendonitis is the inflammation of the connective uh, tissue that uh, uh, surrounds the joint. And it can get caught up in osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis patients and become you know, inflamed. The way to reverse that is by engaging those tendons. So we, by engaging that tissue, we actually get the same anti-inflammatory effect as that is which used through JAK inhibitors that are often used in rheumatoid arthritis treatment, like Zeljans and these kind of medications. So the reference for this uh, down the bottom here in the gray, one of my favorite studies. I mean, this has just really been a profound uh, profoundly satisfying thing to see in practice and in, sorry, is in the research is what we see in practice, which is if you've got uh, an elbow that hurts and it's got uh, like say tenderness around the outside, not in the joint capsule, but around the outside that associated often with, with weakness and brittle tendonitis and stuff. When you engage that tissue, it provides in inflammation relief. And so this is really a, a crucial benefit. Fitness is associated with a reduction in C-reactive protein. This is Melissa finishing, not my Melissa, my wife, Melissa, but Melissa in South Africa, another one of our members, finishing a half marathon. She's had rheumatoid arthritis for several years, following our program, doing exercise training and running. And we know from the science that the, um, that, that uh, the, the, uh, the fitter you are, the, 
the, this correlates with what's called your VO2 max. And the greater your VO2 max, the lower your inflammation levels. And so in very simple terms, the fitter you are, the less C-reactive protein and SED rate, right? So it's a really simple message. So this comes through via cardiovascular exercise or high intensity workouts in a, in a resistance training setting. So we want to get fit, all right? Now, uh, reduced morning stiffness. This is Lara cranking it out in the ocean, all right? So <laughs> she's taken things to a whole new level. I certainly can't go out ocean swimming like this. Um, but the study shows that we can reduce morning stiffness with regular strength training. So a randomized control trial involving 70 rheumatoid patients over a two-year period showed that strength training improved muscle strength, de disease activity, functional capacity, and reduced the average duration of morning stiffness. Okay. And we want to detoxify through sweating. Um, the simple message here is that if you sweat, you have a preferential pathway for certain pesticides and heavy metals to be eliminated from the body. Now we can sweat in a sauna, an infrared sauna. I have one here. It's great. I like it, but I prefer to chase sweat via exercise because you only get the detoxification effect from the sweating in a sauna, but and then you miss out on the other 15 benefits that I'm providing for you uh, here through this slide deck. And so, uh, yes, uh, the studies have shown that sweating a sauna version or, or, or exercise version uh, can both be effective. Um, and so what, what, what was found, it was a Chinese study examined the heavy metal, uh, heavy metals in 76 residents in a, in a city um, that uh, was quite a polluted and uh, populated and, uh, you know, uh, transport heavy city. And they were able to show a, a concentration reduction in the heavy metals and pesticides in these 76 residents on average um, who were exercising more and who were, were sweating more. Okay, so if that's not enough, improved gut health. Okay, so if you look at professional athletes, they predictably have an impressive, beneficially diverse gut microbiome compared to others their age. So this is why I've got a picture of a sporting team here because studies were done on a football team, I think it was out of Scotland. And those people who were part of this rugby team had better gut health than those people who were part of the general population. And so we know that we can improve our gut health with exercise. And given that gut health is one of the main drivers of the problem in the first place for both rheumatoid and osteo, because there is a dietary component contributing to both, then we can actually improve our gut health via the exercise component as well. And so this is, I think, a, a tremendous. There's great mice studies on this as well, showing that exercise reduces leaky gut in mice. And so these mice studies demonstrate exactly what we're trying to achieve as humans with rheumatoid arthritis. We can reduce oxidative stress. Now, this deserves an entire presentation on its own. And so this slide, um, e, uh, yeah, it, it's a whole nother hour, oxidative stress. But basically what it is, is that the, the free radicals being generated in or around cells need to be offset by uh, antioxidants. And within a cell, we have antioxidants to, to do this. And of course, dietarily, we can eat antioxidants, but the ones in the cells are for, far more effective. The ones in the cells are things like glutathione and catalase and superoxide dismutase. And these antioxidant enzymes are most beneficially generated via exercise. And so if you've heard of glutathione, and you've wondered like, what does that mean? It's basically your master antioxidant. And the number one way to, to create this is uh, via exercise. Supplementation, very poor results. Uh, so what we want to do is basically increase our ability to do physical exercise. Okay, and that slide alone is like, the impact of that slide alone is so massive, but 
um, yeah, just get fitter and you'll have less anti less free radicals in your body. And those less free radicals relate directly to less joint destruction. Reduce osteoporosis. So the inflammation associated with rheumatoid arthritis results in bone loss. It is therefore imperative to reduce the inflammation, but also load the bones since physical stress on bones makes them stronger. It is one of the greatest natural weapons you have against osteoporosis since loading the bones increases bone density and reduces the risk of osteoporosis. Stress reduction. It's very hard to be stressed when you are at a high level of physical activity. This is Anu. She's in India, been a member of ours for about two years, rheumatoid arthritis for nine years, and this is her running for the first time. And that big grin at the end there, imagine what it feels like to run for the first time in seven years. That's how long it was since she'd last run. So it's euphoric being able to feel the breeze in your air. And if you can't run, get on a stationary bike, experience the sunshine in your face as I do. Look at the sunshine coming through on me right now, right over my face there. Uh, I should have lowered that window blind. Um Get out there, get amongst it. The feeling of movement and the and 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 stress reduction uh, is enormous. There's studies on this, but we all get it. Exercise feels good. Reduce osteoarthritis. So exercise relieves the pathological changes of osteoarthritis by reducing the degradation of multiple aspects of the joint. So this is a study taken just last year or published just last year that's really interesting, shows all the benefits for osteoarthritis by exercise. And the two more benefits here uh, I want to talk about is improved circulation. So if we're trying to increase blood flow to our joint, to the, to the extremities and to the tissues surrounding our joints, we need more movement and our lymphatic system, which is our waste removal system in the body, is three times more effective when it is moved than what it is when we are stationary. So if we want to eliminate waste and we want to uh, you know, have the ability to uh, move cytokines around and out of the body, then we have to improve our movement to stimulate lymphatic function. Okay, so here are the 16 life-changing benefits of exercise room tours are all laid out in front of you. All you got to do is get up and get into it. So people say, oh, well, here's an example for before I go any further. Here's an, here's a, an example of an extreme case. This is Larry Nolan, who was diagnosed with juvenile idiopathic arthritis when he was about 16. He then started weight training at 16. He knew nothing about nutrition, but he knew a lot about how to lift weights. Uh, made him feel good. At least he learned quick, and he went from uh, uh, he went from being told he might need a wheelchair to now competing uh, in natural bodybuilding competitions. And he said that if he stops weight training, he starts to notice symptoms again for his rheumatoid arthritis, for which he takes no medication. He went and saw his rheumatologist um, when I spoke to him a few months ago on our podcast. You can listen to the Larry Nolan interview on the Rheumatoid Solutions podcast. And he talks about how his rheumatologist said that if he presented for the first time, uh, the way he was last time he saw him, like uh, several months ago, he wouldn't have diagnosed him with rheumatoid arthritis. And this is after he's had that since he's 16 years old and uses strength and, uh, and, and weight training to keep his inflammation at bay. So the goal for exercise is simply the habit. That's really what we're trying to establish here. We want to establish a habit of exercise in our life. And I'm just going to shut this blind right here. Um, because as long as we have the habit, then the benefits will flow. We don't need to overthink it. We can start out really silly small, as I like to say. So 
if someone says oh, i can't exercise i don't exercise i've never exercised i say well can you can you can you get up and out of your chair three times and of course i can get up out of my chair okay well can you move your head back and forth 10 times yeah i can move my head okay let's start with head 10 head movements all right and then tomorrow we'll do 15 head movements and then i'll get you to raise your shoulders all right so we're talking so silly that you can't say no. And once you're on the plan of doing that each day and developing the habit around it, the dopamine kicks in, the the, the familiarity arises and you build that habit, okay? Now, the exercise formula is real simple. This is what we're gonna do and I'll now show each of the areas of the body and how to exercise them. It is three R's or triple R plus C. So what we wanna do is remember this, we need to do repetitions, which is just movement. Remember I said reps equal relief. We need to do resistance, which is resistance bands or resistance weights at the gym or using gravity so that we have to develop strength around the joint to support the joint. And then we want to release the uh, all of the tension around a joint by doing stretching. And then we also need to add a cardiovascular component and we can choose, we can, uh, we can do walking back with therapy. And I'll talk about some of those in just a moment. So when we apply this formula, triple R plus C uh, to our exercise, it becomes very easy. So let's look at examples of each one of these as we uh, consider uh, various joint parts. So for example, if your fingers and hands hurt, remember, the triple R. So we, the triple R is repetitions, resistance, and relief. So repetitions, we just might just want to stand up and bend over at the waist and just move our arms back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and then letting those fingers flick out at the end so that they're getting uh, uh, movement through them. Why do we do that instead of just open, close, open, close? It's because if we've got really inflamed fingers, as a lot of people do with RA, then this is a way of getting reps through their joints without having to actually engage any of the surrounding tissue, uh, the soft tissue, which, which is really tender for a lot of people. So, and then resistance, we start out with a really big circumference, uh, hard cylinder. Um, and this might be a big fat torch or a flashlight. Uh, or, and, a, or, and then you might want to move down after that to a broom handle and then maybe down something uh, a little lower until you can get right down to a pen and then a full fist. So we want to go through that, that, that sequence, but never irritating a joint by trying to squeeze into it in a, in a, uh, a way that, that really um, is beyond its current range of motion. And then we want to release. We want to pull some those fingers back gently one at a time without... Uh, pushing into the joints themselves and then just spread out our fingers and try and stretch them out. So that's just some simple finger and hand exercises that can be done every day to slowly start to repair the uh, the, the joints. Uh, with wrists, we can again, okay, so repetitions, resistance, release. You'll see this on each of the slides I'm showing for these, uh, for these uh, body parts. You can just move back and forth, dangle it again, just with gravity, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. One of our members inside our support platform calls it calls this wrist cardio. Um, so it's just her little nickname for it. There's no cardio, of course, but the, the feeling behind it is high repetition activity. And then we want to get some resistance. Now with the wrists, I've found that they do best when they are just engaged in full kinetic chain activity, meaning not sit there with a weight on the end of your wrist, moving them up and down, up and down. I used to find that irritated the wrist. I like to keep the wrist straight and engage them in activity, as I said, that involves the whole kinetic chain of the arm. And so you can see in the pull and push exercises here, the wrist is perfectly straight, but the wrist is being engaged because it's stopping the handle from flicking back and forth. There's some tension under it. So... This works best for the wrist, especially if you have rheumatoid arthritis with very delicate wrist joints. And then to release this, one option is just not to do any stretching for the 
wrists. That works best for me. But some people have found it best if they move their wrist down uh, in both directions, just like as illustrated. And we actually have a member, Katie, in our community who did a, a podcast interview with me showing all of the wrist exercises that she has done that have dramatically helped her wrist. And they involve a lot of those kind of stretching activities. So again, you can see that over at the YouTube channel at Rheumatoid Solutions. So check that out if wrists are a problem area for you and you do what's on the screen and it's not enough, go check out what Katie's got. Okay, so shoulders and back. So first of all, our repetitions, we want to get movement through the shoulders. Now, often before football matches, if you ever watch that, the, the, the players are doing sort of shoulder rolls, they might be swinging their arms back and forth or in, in big circular motions. But for those of us who are not uh, um, you know, if, if you wanted something a little bit more conservative, you can do repetitions just as you walk, get out on a grassy field and swing those arms back and forth for the shoulders and back. The shoulders and back I've combined together here because the rotator cuff, the, uh, uh, the, the whole connective um, muscles of the shoulder and back are kind of, for me, I, I, I like to treat them somewhat together. And so um, the movement through the shoulder, for example, you can't isolate a shoulder movement like that without engaging the scapula. So it's all some, you know, connected. And so if we get that movement through the shoulders by swinging the arms back and forth, and then we want to build the resistance. Here we've got same exercises as the last, uh, as the last slide for the wrists here. So we can do these resistance exercises of push, pull, and then raises. Um, over here and these are very very simple but effective exercises and then we want to release the uh, connective tissue with chest openers here that are, that opens the front of the the deltoid and into the back and scap scapula what about the feet what if the feet hurt look how simple this is here repetitions barefoot walking resistance barefoot walking and then release we want to pull back on our toes and stretch them back. First of all, let me talk about the barefoot walking. Um, oh yeah, I think, yes. Okay, so there was a podcast that I had my medical researcher uh, um, published recently, which is the benefits of barefoot walking. This is the thumbnail for the YouTube video over at Rheumatoid Solutions channel. And you can watch all the benefits of barefoot walking for the feet and also for knee pain reduction. Uh, and so when we barefoot walk, we're engaging all of the tiny little soft tissue, connective tendons and muscles and everything in the feet. And what this does is provide that anti-inflammatory effect of tissue engagement that I talked about before. It also improves range of motion and strength. And uh, there's no greater thing for your feet than walking barefoot in soft grass to help to encourage the effects I just mentioned. We also then use the release by pulling back on these toes. Now, <laughs> if you've got painful toes and inflammation in the metatarsals, this really hurts. But I've experimented with this over the years. And the pain in this particular movement, just this particular image here, uh, where you pull back on your toes, um, does not seem to aggravate symptoms and seems to only provide benefit. Experiment with this yourself. But that's been my pretty rigorous analysis results. And watch this video. Okay, ankles. So with ankles, again, we want to get repetitions. The best way is just through walking. Uh, resistance exercise can be done through calf raises with both uh, straight legs and through bent legs. And the reason we do it through two different formats is because there are two different muscles in the calf muscle and the different approaches here with the straight and the bent knees uh, give you access into different muscle groups. And then we want to uh, lean against a wall, as is shown on the far right here, and do what are called tibialis raises. And so we're building the front muscle at the front of the shin, but it also strengthens the ankles. What's not shown here is also balancing on one leg is very good for ankles because of the stabilizing uh, muscles uh, that are required. Okay. And then to release, we want to stretch our calf muscles and point those toes forward to release at the front of the ankle here. 
Okay, knees, everyone's favorite. Very, most people uh, with osteoarthritis or rheumatoid arthritis have enjoyed the glorious benefits of knee hell. Uh, and so we want to get repetitions. The great way that's not an impactful way is to do repetitions on a stationary bike. So if you've ever had, uh, if you've ever been to like a physio or knee, post-surgical knee uh, rehabilitation, almost always they start with a, uh, uh, some form of uh, resistance bike, either one like this or a recumbent bike. And then uh, resistance we can get through simply squatting to a chair or my favorite, which is the one next to that, this one here, where we do a one-legged isometric, meaning stationary, not moving, hold where we're balancing on one leg and the other one is tucked up behind us. In the gym, people refer this thing as a Bulgarian split squat, but without the chair and they put weights on their arms. Now, but the variation here is notice that the hands are not touching the chair. We're trying to actually build strength in both the quadricep, but also build strength in the hip, which helps stabilize us in a one-legged position and the ankles, okay? So we try and balance here for a long period of time, maybe maybe 90 seconds, two minutes. And, and you'll find this very challenging at first to balance. And we don't want to use that back leg to, to do too much other than just to sit there uh, uh, to give us that light quad stretch. And this is a very effective technique for the knees, for very, very bad knees, just to start to build some stabilization and some quad and glute strength. Then we can release through the classic three, which is hamstrings, glutes, and quadricep stretches. Here's three of the more common ones. Okay, so um, inside our members area, I have a, I think it's 52 minutes, very long video going through all of the things that I did. You can see uh, that uh, in that image there, me on my back, I take people through a gym and show all the things that I uh, do to uh, to support my knees and uh, uh, if that's interest to people it's very comprehensive now what about the hips now um, has our video come out uh, the hip we are about to release I think uh, uh, I can't remember if it's out yet or, or uh, but uh, watch the YouTube channel rheumatoid solutions and because our video all about reversing or reducing inflammation in the hips for arthritis patients is about to drop. These are just some images from that. But here we want walking again. The studies are really, really strong with walking and hip pain. We want to really focus on walking as our main strategy and then build resistance through exercises such, again, the bike. Um, we've got some glute bridges and some of these lateral leg raises, trying to isolate the muscles in the bum and the, around the hip there to build strength because the resistance training helps to build strength and strength reduces the hip pain. And then to release, here are just some examples. Um, we can get one foot up and we can stretch up under the, uh, the back of the leg here, calf stretching here, a different format for that. But any uh, stretching, you know, there's just so many variations of stretching that you can do to um, to release hip pain. Now, let me see if, yes, yes, it must be just, okay. Um, it must just come out yesterday or the day before. A new video, um, which is a Rheumatoid Solutions channel. You can watch all the hip pain research that uh, it's about, yeah, 19 minute video. So go check that out as well. Much, much more detail than what I've just got here. And we're coming to the end of this presentation here. We've got now to look at, we want to pick a cardiovascular exercise option. So what we've done is we've looked at all the different sort of exercises that we can do to target the joints, but then what can we do to target our heart? What can we do to increase our cardiovascular ability? Because we know that that reduces inflammation too. And essentially, how do we get fitter, not just stronger? Well, um, we have a list of things here and a lot of these are, are, are pretty straightforward and obvious and available to most of us. So we can choose one and go for it. Now, the, the walking is not necessarily enough on its own if you have rheumatoid. It's just not anti-inflammatory enough. Doesn't bring up our heart rate enough. But Bikram yoga 
it will blow your mind if you've never done that. It could be called 26 and 2 in your area. Check that out. That for me was a game changer. Aqua therapies, wonderful if you've got limited uh, abilities, a great sort of introductory level for uh, arthritis. Swimming sensational, absolutely 10 out of 10 if you have a pool nearby and you're uh, able to, uh, to, to, to get into that, please do. Stationary bike is awesome because it can be done at home or at the gym. And it's just fantastic, especially for the knees and hips. And then anything else you like, Pilates, other types of yoga, jogging, even dancing. There's been studies on dancing that even show that dancing does not irritate uh, symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis and in fact, improved the uh, uh, inflammatory markers of people who dance regularly with rheumatoid arthritis. So we just need to pick something for our cardio and get into it. And so the ideal exercise path forward is to commit to an exercise every day. The goal is the habit, all right? Just begin, just get into it um, and start silly small and build 1% per day. When we're in a really acute phase, we don't want to exercise too heavy. So just exercise at maybe 50 to 70% exertion with the resistance work. And then when we're in a mature phase and we've been exercising for a few months, then we can do every other day with our exercise at like a 70 to 90% exertion. I really want everyone to embrace this concept of getting fitter and stronger. And if you make this one of your highest priorities in life, then it will improve all aspects of your health and your mental health as well. It's just, it's just a, uh, an, a, uh, a, a one bullet for every salute for every problem. It's a form of medicine. Take your medicine, and one day I may get to the point where I actually say that diet, that exercise is more important than diet. I haven't got there quite, but it may happen one day. Because exercise, as we saw, improves the microbiome, reduces inflammation, lowers oxidative stress, emotional stress, improves your meal, builds strength and confidence, provides you with better balance. And as we get older, better balance will help reduce our risk of falling or injury and worse. Okay, so if people are interested in taking this to a whole new level, uh, check out rheumatoidsolutions.com where we've got a workout for the upper body and a workout for the lower body, which incorporates all of the uh, images that I, I, I um, went through above and more and has a complete uh, stretching component as well to be done before and after so that we don't do any, uh, uh, don't aggravate any of the inflamed joints. And um, we also, of course, at Rheumatoid Solutions uh, have um, the Patterson program included in your membership and Rheumatoid Solutions, which is a library of over 900 videos created by myself, rheumatologists and medical doctors, uh, answering every single question I think anyone's ever asked in the last seven years about this condition and associated problems and medications and supplements and everything related in quick bite-sized videos like Netflix. And of course, we do live calls every month with our medical doctors and myself to take questions and to support people with these conditions because arthritis uh, can raise lots of problems and uh, and we're there to uh, to answer those. So that's my presentation, Chef AJ. Wow, not you have nine hundred videos archived. That's amazing. Nine hundred and growing each month as we do another uh, Q and A with our members, and they ask a question that we've never had before. I then have that question edited out of the uh, the video and uploaded into that database. So that yes, it's. It's beautiful. It, it looks like and feels like Netflix and it's all arthritis videos. Wow, that is incredible. Well, you know, the exercises you showed, they can be done by people that don't have arthritis. Totally, yeah. And you notice that they're all very simple because we're all, you know, when we have rheumatoid arthritis or osteoarthritis, sometimes the uh, the, the the abilities are at, a, at, a, at an introductory level. And so that's why all of those Exercises are things that can be done at an entry, introductory level. And of course, if someone's watching this and they think all oh, that looks very easy and they attend the gym or they do Pilates or yoga all the time, then wonderful. And as we go back to that uh, quote that I read out uh, from the uh, cardiologist from the Cleveland Clinic, there's no upper limit. You literally cannot become fit enough if you're interested in health. There's no upper limit. Absolutely go for it. 
and um, and it will it will provide lifelong benefits as a reward. I think it's hard for many people to start exercising if they haven't done exercise, you know, either in a long time or their whole life. But I would imagine it would be especially difficult for people that are experiencing pain in their joints. Uh, uh, most definitely, and that's why we uh, we just want to uh, just just start with the concept of. Uh, like silly small, just just do anything that's so easy, and um, uh, you know if someone says, "Oh, I can't do five minutes on a treadmill," okay, then then do two, you know, and it really is the habit. And if we can just get into the routine of doing it, and think of it as medicine, people don't forget to take their in 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 the cases of you know arthritis. Often it's a pain relief like ibuprofen or take their their Tylenol, they don't forget that. Well, take your medicine and your exercise too. You don't forget to eat. <laughs> you know what I mean? You got it. Yeah, you got to do the exercise it's as well. So it's that hard, important. Clint. I mean, in with the in with the people I've worked with, eventually you can get them to like the food and change their diet because, like you mentioned, they have to eat. But I I think a lot of people don't feel that they have to exercise, and it's more of a luxury than a necessity. Yes, and hopefully now after people have heard me uh, uh, go on about this now for a good 40 minutes or so, that they really embrace this and see that there's just, there's it's just the biggest untapped potential that most people are sitting on. It's like everyone has their own gold mine right within them and they don't mine it. You just have to do it. It's, it's, yeah. I didn't exercise till I was 52 and now I have to exercise or I just like, it's, 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 it's just, you, you have to, once you, once you get into the habit, like you say, it's building habits and you, what I would do to trick myself at the beginning, just like you said, is when I really didn't want to do it. Cause my, my exercise of choice is spinning. I have my own spin bike. Cause I just couldn't stand going to the gym with all the loud music and the sweaty people. Ugh. So yeah. Dr. Lau convinced me to get my own bike, which in the long run turned out to be cheaper. I'll, I say to myself, you know what? I only have to do it for five minutes. I do it for an hour or more. And then once you're doing it for five minutes, am I really going to unstrap the thing? And, you know, I'm like, okay, well, I'm already here. I'm already watching a show. I can just, uh... and that's the other way I trick myself is I allow myself juicy things on Netflix only when I'm on the bike. So that's the reward. Yeah, I love it. I, I love it. I link it together. So then I don't mind it so much, you know, but I'll tell you, if there was a way to get the benefit of exercise without having to do it, like paying somebody, because you can pay somebody to cook for you, but I don't think we're there yet. <laughs> no, 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 I love it. What love do you it. do for exercise mostly on a daily basis? Yeah, it changed. It has changed over the years. So it, it has evolved based on my sort of the scale of my problems and the, and the level of, uh, uh kind of commitment uh so it used to be bikram yoga which is like sweaty 90 minute same postures every time and i used to do that every day just so that i could walk i if i didn't if i missed a class i could barely walk the next day so i never missed more than two days i uh, did that for a year and then i progressed from there to stationary bike and then uh doing that all the time walking and stationary bike but always something never just walking never always something more substantial and then I'm moving into weight training and then I've been doing weights now probably for the last 12 years. And when I weight train, I have lots of areas of my body that need to be worked around, you know, compromises and just due to elbow damage, knee damage, this sort of stuff. And so I've got my own routines that I make up um, and they're simple. They're like the ones that I've described or shown you earlier. These are the ones that, that I follow. So push exercises, pull exercises, you know, simple movements, nothing complicated. Um, I steer away from sort of robot sort of movements like bench press with two arms and lying on a back, which you don't really do in nature and try and keep it more functional. Things like a lunge, like a big step more functional than say, uh, you know, getting under a barbell and doing squats. So I, I, I kind of keep my movements at the gym functional with resistance and simple as that and lots of stretching. So I'll, I'll, if, if my wife and I watch a half an hour of TV some nights before bed, maybe twice a week, I'll always be on a foam roller and do stretching. So we're not holding hands on the couch. I'm at, I've got, I'm on the <laughs> ground, and, you know. Good to know that you're human and you watch some TV. In Australia, do you get the same types of shows we get? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, we Netflix, all, all, a lot of the American TV shows. Yeah, 
the Australian, you know, television programming is mostly driven by US US TV. Yeah. Do you have a favorite? Anything I might have heard of? Oh, we've just finished watching Beef. I don't know if you've seen that on Netflix. We have. I'll look it up. I don't. I don't know if we have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, Ali Wong's in it. Oh, I love her. Oh, wait, that's the one with the road rage, right? Yeah, yeah. Is it good? I haven't seen it yet. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So I won't give anything away. But let me tell you, that thing takes like it's interesting at the start. And then it's almost it's almost like the director said said to himself about five episodes in. I'm going to ramp this up to an intensity that is so high that I'm not going to lose one viewer. And it's just the intensity just goes to like, you know, octane levels and you don't expect it because it's, it's like, it's paced really well, but then you think the pace is good, but then the pace just goes up to like insane. I'm going to give it a try. I do like her very much. Yeah. I mean, there's lots of language. There's lots of yelling at each other. There's, you know, it's, it's not a children's show. No, (laughs) I didn't think so. Hey, uh, how's the, how's the other elbow doing? Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Both elbows. So you saw me in the videos there doing pull-ups and stuff. So the elbows are uh, are good. So I just got to watch from time to time. If I sleep in some unusual positions, they can complain, but it's not sign of itis like rheumatoid. It's just, you know, like an old car that's been driven incorrectly for a day. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Well, really, thank you so much. That was a great presentation, Clint. Yeah, thank you. My pleasure. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow when my guest is Dr. Peter Rogers. Take care, everyone.